Uh, hello everyone. Uh, today we are here to talk about cloning. Dolly the sheep. We all know famous Dolly the sheep, uh, but before we actually saw the living, breathing proof of concept, uh, most people even didn't know that it is possible. And then they cloned a cat. They actually called it copycat or CC. Uh, then a horse. And nowadays, uh, if your pet that you really loved just died, and you have to spare hundred thousand dollars, you can have it back again. Uh, but why do we don't we clone humans? Well. Uh, there are several reasons for that. For example, one of them is commercial. At least there is officially no commercial interest in cloning humans. Uh, of course, there are legal and ethical issues. Uh, and most of all, most scientists agree that it's really difficult to clone a primate. Uh, for the pets, it's easy, but it's really difficult for the humans. Uh, so, uh, but can we be really sure that there is no living, breathing human clone around us? And how about mobile contactless payments? Uh, well, based solely on the market growth prediction, uh, I think we can safely agree uh, that fraudsters have commercial reasons to do it. Uh, and of course, stealing and uh, stealing is illegal and unethical. But I don't think fraudsters have such kind of morality. So uh, the only safeguard we have uh, are the technical countermeasures. And fortunately, we have a lot of them. Uh, uh, there is uh, tokenization, uh, tamper, uh, tam uh, <laughs> provisioning, and so on. Uh, so. Uh, we have a lot of countermeasures, but can we be really sure that they can withstand the incoming threat? Uh, we'll find out in a few minutes, but first we need a short introduction on this technology. Uh, host card emulation. Uh, anybody pays using the phone? Uh, contactless payment? Anybody? Okay, great. Uh, some people. Uh, anybody is implementing it, uh, for example, from a bank or, oh, yeah, there is someone. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, let's get back uh, about 10 years uh, uh, past where the first mobile contactless payments were born. Uh, the idea was to make it as secure as the plastic card. So there was uh, this secure element hardware uh, and in this hardware, uh, the, all the, the keys and uh, encryption they uh, needed for encryption were stored uh, in process or in this secure element hardware. Uh, and the mobile application, mobile OS, didn't have access to this. Uh, but that required cooperation uh, with um, uh, mobile operators and banks, and everybody wanted to have control over it. and. Uh, it was really difficult to agree, uh, and it's quite painful process from user perspective because you needed special SIM and so on. Uh, so, when in 2011, when the Google uh, announced the first mobile uh, wallet, Google Wallet, it was based on Galaxy Nexus Secure Element in the uh, Google's uh, own phone. Uh, the mobile operators have their own vision how to rule the world. They created ISIS. Uh, actually, <laughs> yes, it was called ISIS. Uh, and they deliberately blocked Google, uh, Google Wallet uh, on their own devices because they w Google wanted to use the secure element. Uh, so uh, Google, uh, well, of course, uh, a few years later, they had to change its name, and then Google bought what's left of them. <laughs> but uh, actually, uh, they. Uh, in the meantime, they started another revolution, uh, which uh, couldn't be stopped later. Uh, they created so-called host card emulation. So the secure element was moved to the cloud. And everyone is happy because there is no need for a very difficult agreement with the, uh, with the mobile operator. And uh, uh, the, the secure element is in the cloud and it's, uh, everything is in software. Uh, so, uh, how does it work? Well, uh, I will try to show it to you. 
uh, I have the uh, mobile contactless payments terminal. Hopefully, I will be able to make it work. Um, yeah. So there is a phone. Uh, I just put the phone over there, uh, over this terminal. It doesn't work because of the rubber. <laughs> okay. So uh, it's confirmed. Uh, I just put the phone close to the terminal. I don't need to do anything. I, I don't need to unlock this phone even. And it just works. Uh, oh. <laughs> So it was visible only on my <laughs> screen. <laughs> Sorry for that. So let's do it again. Uh, okay. Okay. Nobody told me that you don't see it. Uh, okay. So uh, we'll make it another uh, another one. I just put it close. Uh, okay. And the it's confirmed. I just put it close to the phone and uh, 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 and it works. Uh, so uh, let's get back to the slides. Okay. Uh, but if you are a bank and you want to integrate it in your mobile application, uh, you have a few options. You can use um, uh, well, you can write it your, by your own, but it's very difficult. But um, in most cases, you take external library. They are, they are SDKs from Visa and MasterCard, but uh, there are other several uh, commercial products. Uh, and uh, the documentation of this uh, looks like this. Uh, uh, the, secure, the keys are secured in a secure environment, guarded by two firewalls and reverse proxy. Uh, and uh, this uh, library is called HC Applet, so they use uh, exactly the same name as for secure element uh, Java card Applet, and they try to picture it as an external entity, uh, and the only thing that the, the mobile uh, banking uh, developer is interested in is SDK. He doesn't know how this works. so. Uh, as for us, it was quite obvious uh, that you can just copy this data because this data is in mobile applications folder. It's just a library. Uh, that was somewhere lost in translation that uh, it, it is possible to, to, to clone. So <laughs> uh, we noticed that uh, our clients uh, could not believe that it's possible to technically do the cloning. So. Uh, we decided to make proof of concept, and that is where uh, my research starts. Uh, my name is uh, Sławomir Jasek, by the way. Uh, I work for Securing. Uh, we spent a lot of time for research, and of course we are hiring, so if, if you want to work, <laughs> come to visit our booth over there uh, and talk to us. Uh, okay, so let's cut to the chase. How do we steal the money? <laughs> So I would like you to uh, try to imagine that you are a group of thieves and there is a new lucrative target, uh, money in the phone. <laughs> so in this phone there is money, you just put it close to the terminal and it's, you can pay using it. So <laughs> what would you do as a thief? Well, uh, you could just steal the phone, right? So uh, you could make transactions using this phone. but. <laughs> Think of it. Uh, I if you would lose your your smartphone, exactly how many seconds later you would know that <laughs> that you don't have your smartphone? Of course, you would immediately report it uh, to the bank uh, as soon as you would find a way to contact your bank without your smartphone. But <laughs> that's another problem. Uh, and I don't think it's. Uh, it's a real risk, uh, and based on the, on the statistics of, of real uh, plastic cards uh, stealing, uh, well, uh, it's not really a risk. Uh, so maybe we could steal this data somehow using NFC Reader, for example. There, is, uh, there are applications called NFC Reader, so uh, we could just read this card number. Uh, I can show it to you also. Uh, so I have this NFC reader. So when I press it close, oh sorry again. <laughs> uh, okay. So this is NFC card reader. So when I 
press it close to the to this phone. It's I, I, I should read, but it doesn't work. Well, it turns out that I need to turn the l screen on in order to read it. So now I can read it, and you have the card number over there. So uh, how many of you already scanned this card number? <laughs> uh, well, uh, it turns out that even if you did, uh, you wouldn't be able to use it for payment uh, because, uh, uh, well, uh, the screen has to be on, but so th this uh, attack is not really easy to do because w without user interaction uh, via pocket or something. Um, and you won't make online payments using this card number because it, this is not the original card number. Uh, this one is a uh, so-called tokenized one. So maybe you could do Mac Stripe uh, track two and uh, use it in a, a terminal that can uh, uh, is backwards compatible via NFC, uh, but. Uh, I don't think you will be able to do it. If you do, just let me know. <laughs> so we can talk about uh, research uh, together. Uh, but uh, I don't think you would be able to, to use uh, this NFC sniff data to anything uh, because of the so-called tokenization. So the real, your real card number is changed to a random one. Uh, and this random card number has limited card, d limited domain use, so you can't use it in online payments. It's just used for for the NFC contactless payments uh, and uh, for the terminal to know which card it speaks to. So, uh, how are these NFC transactions actually executed? Well, you need to have not just the card number, uh, but the key, the key. Uh, which encrypts the uh, EMV communication with the reader. So this is the key uh, that a thief would be after uh, in order to make uh, mobile contactless payments on another device, for example. So how can we steal this key? Well, maybe we could intercept it in transfer. It has to be somehow transferred to this device, but uh, well, uh, this infrastructure is quite complicated, usually. Uh, it involves communications with uh, uh, many servers, and um, usually it's quite well uh, secured. So uh, there is, of course, certificate pinning. They are often they use second layer encryption, so we don't see just the clear text uh, communication. It's somehow encrypted, besides, of course, TLS. Uh, so there are possible uh, flaws in it, uh, in pro problems with uh, uh, certificate pinning. Uh, I could talk uh, hours about uh, the deeply hidden bugs uh, under this proprietary encryption, but it's, uh, as, as, as it is very interesting for Pentester, uh, the real risk is uh, I don't think it's possible to really exploit it. So. Uh, I don't think it's possible to, to intercept this in transfer. Uh, so, any other any other ideas? Uh, the key is is just stored in user space. There is no hardware secure element. So, maybe we could get it somehow from the phone, and for that we could, for example, use mobile malware. Uh, the most common mobile malware nowadays is is just a malware that. Uh, presents overlays over users, over users' API, uh, API GUI, uh, and can intercept uh, uh, text messages and uh, intercept pins and so on. Uh, but this kind of malware uh, doesn't have access to the private folder of the application where the card data is stored. Uh, so in order to access this private card data, we need special rights. Uh, we need to have root, and root is the god. Uh, uh, it, it has access to all the data without any restrictions, uh, so having root, we can get access to this data. Uh, and uh, in order to have the root, uh, we could uh, have a malware 
which uh, infects the mobile phone and then exploits vulnerabilities in it uh, in order to gain these root credentials. For example, you have an out, uh, uh, not updated Android phone. Uh, it's not uh, very rare. Uh, and uh, it has some vulnerabilities in it, so mobile uh, malware can exploit them to gain root credentials. We are not talking about users routing uh, their phones. We are talking about malware which can get root uh, credentials without the user knowing it. And there is a recently there is a, a lot of such malware which infected millions of devices. Uh, and so this risk is real. Um, so if we would have the root malware and remote access to this phone, we could get this key. But this key is encrypted. <laughs> well, we could expect it somehow. <laughs> of course, they, they encrypt this data. Uh, they try to protect it from, from, uh, from the uh, thieves. Uh, so uh, what can we do to, to uh, retrieve this key, uh, to uh, decrypt it? Well, this is Android application, so we could try to decompile the binary and get the source code and understand how this encryption works. Uh, but it turns out they use obfuscation. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, it's quite difficult to understand this decompiled code. Uh, it may be possible if you, if you spend a lot of time on it, uh, but you would, and as an attacker, uh, you would need to do it for every application because they are uh, differently encoded. So, I, I noticed that most uh, creators of such uh, security mechanism, uh, they tend to uh, <laughs> imagine that the attacker will take this simple tool uh, and try to attack this security mechanism just by using the simple tool and he will fail, of course. But what if there was a workaround uh, just around these security mechanisms? <laughs> so, uh, if you take two steps back and think how this encryption works, uh, it doesn't require any user PIN or password entered on the, on the phone. Uh, and there is also a business requirement that it has to work offline. So uh, if you don't have internet connection, you also have to be able to make the payment. So how the key is stored? Well, the key has to be stored also somewhere on the phone or maybe he can, it can be hard-coded in the, in the application binary, right? There is just no other way to do it. So what can we do to clone this card? You probably have an idea. So we could just take another device and install exactly the same application and copy all the user's data. So it should just decrypt itself right? Uh, so let's try to do it with Android Pay. Uh, so I just showed you Android Pay working on this one. Uh, so I will connect uh, to this device. Uh, okay. Oh. Uh, I will connect using ADB, but uh, let's imagine that I have a malware with remote root access to it. Uh, so, uh, I will get the shell on it. Uh, I will use my secret uh, access to the root and uh, invoke the backup script. Uh. Okay, so now I'm just getting all the data. Yep. 
Okay, so uh, we have the data. Uh, now I will just download this data to my computer. remotely uh, and then I will have another phone uh, this one also has Android Pay installed uh, but uh, it's not activated so uh, of course this is the attacker's phone uh, this one the black one uh, and uh, When I run the Android Pay, uh, it just needs to be activated, so uh, it doesn't work yet. Uh, but I will connect to it uh, remotely. Um, I just need to show. Okay. Uh, I will connect to this other phone. Okay. I will push this cloned data. to my attacker's phone. Wi-Fi is a bit crowded there. <laughs> uh, okay, so it's already on this attacker's phone. Uh, I will just get the shell to it uh, and my secret super user and I will just restore this data. I can restore fridge. Oh. Okay, so now I'm restoring it on, on this device, on my attacker's device, and I will just reboot this uh, device to get all the settings correctly. Uh, let's put the camera. Oh, yeah. So it reboots now, and in a few moments it, has it should have the cloned data. So I will try to make the payment again. Okay. So let's try to make the payment using this clone. Oh. Uh. Okay. Oh, uh, it requires me to put the card in, but um, I'm not able to do it. <laughs> uh, let's do it again. Uh, it's not because of the cloning failure; because it's because the failure in communication with the with the uh, with the payments terminal. Uh, I can already uh, uh, scan this uh, using. Uh, let's try again. Uh, using card reader. So when I put the card reader to this to this cloned phone, oh. pin required. Okay, so now I have uh, exactly the same card number uh, on this clone device. Uh, the only thing left is to make a transaction and uh, so let's try to do it again of this terminal. Okay. Please wait. And uh, it is confirmed. So I made the. <laughs> 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 
so I was able to make the, t the transactions using this uh, attacker's phone, copied this data from this one. Uh, so let's get back to the presentation. And uh, you probably want to know what was in this cloning script, uh, but it wasn't rocket surgery. I just used three commands that you, sh you should know. It was star uh, to, to copy the data, change owner when I was restoring uh, it, and also restore clone, which uh, helped me to restore SLINUS privileges. Uh, and I actually uh, promised not to disclose the scripts, uh, so uh, but I think you deserve for them, so I will show them for just a few seconds. Are you ready? Oh, you have your chances, <laughs> right? <laughs> and the restore script. <laughs> there it was. <laughs> so um, this, this worked for Android Pay, uh, because Android Pay just checks uh, device ID. I also copied by copying data. Uh, well, uh, they, they check Android ID, not device ID. But most other banking applications, uh, when you try this trick, uh, it doesn't work. Uh, why? Well, because the encryption key is tied to the specific device. Uh, so, uh, besides that the, the, there is uh, some key element stored on the phone and, and hard-coded in the mobile application, they also check device specific characteristics. So if you just take it and copy it to another device, it doesn't work. So what if we took exactly the same phone, uh, I mean the same phone model, and we also cloned the IMEI number, so they are physically the same. So it turns out that it works. Uh, and in most cases, you need to copy all the all, also all the user data, not just from this payment application. Uh, but this is not really practical attack on a mass scale. So if an attacker would need to buy exactly the same hardware phone, uh, the return of investment wouldn't be uh, really interesting for the attacker. <laughs> so uh, what can we do to make it to a different device? Uh, so we can use so-called expose framework, which intercepts uh, the system calls uh, and can spoof the device characteristics. So on a standard device, when the mobile application asks for, for device characteristics, it just gets them straight from the OS. And uh, if you have this expose framework and install a special module for changing uh, device ID, uh, it is intercepted and you can return anything. So we can spoof the device characteristics on another device. Uh, and it looks, from the mobile application point of view, it looks exactly the same. So uh, we uh, don't have this, we, we can work around this, this uh, uh, security mechanism. <laughs> uh, so we made, we, we made a single transaction for one Polish Zwarte. Uh, and, well, well, it shouldn't be a problem because uh, the payment keys uh, that are stored on this uh, phone, they are limited use. So you can just make a single transaction uh, or a few of them, then you, you have to refresh these keys. Uh, and of course the transactions needs to, uh, for higher amounts, needs to be authorized by PIN. So uh, let's take a look at this key replenish process. Uh, how, how do you get more keys on this device after you use this uh, single-use keys? Well, uh, it's usually quite a complicated process, uh, also involving a few servers. Uh, uh, most in most cases, let's uh, uh, say that part of the key is taken from the mobile wallet server, and another one is pushed through, through Google Cloud Messaging, so you have to intercept both of them. And this part is, we actually already done because uh, we spoofed the original device and when we talk to the mobile wallet server, it just can't tell uh, which uh, device it's speaking to. So we can imitate the original device in the request to the server and get the exact same responses. Uh, so the only thing left, we need just to hijack the push, uh, the Google Cloud push which goes uh, to the original device. And 
Uh, if we still have access to this original device, uh, uh, we could just intercept it on it, but it would be more interesting to reroute it to, to our uh, device. So I made uh, an experiment that I cloned all the user's data, uh, including the uh, data needed for uh, Google identification, uh, and in this uh, case, both devices have the same Android ID, keys, and, and uh, Google sub subscriptions. So I was able to get the Google push uh, from the cloud on the cloned device. Uh, and in this case, uh, intercept this data. So I can make multiple transactions. I can renew these keys. So, uh, well, we have, uh, of course, we have uh, limits on the number of transactions, and uh, the thief would be rather after one single transaction on a large amount, and not a multiple small amount transactions, because that would be much more difficult to steal and easier to catch the thief. So, uh, fortunately, transactions for over 50 p uh, Polish water needs to be authorized by PIN, and you enter this PIN uh, on a terminal, right? <laughs> Uh, so this is called the flow limit, and you should enter this pin on the terminal, but how do you set up this pin? Well, it turns out that in most uh, uh, mo mobile applications, uh, as, re requirement, as a business requirement, you need to, uh, the whole pr enrollment process needs to go through mobile. So when you uh, enroll for a new card, uh, you set up everything in your mobile phone, including the PIN. So uh, you also enter this PIN on your mobile phone. So uh, if I have access to this phone, I could, in I could intercept it. Uh, and I could uh, trick the user into entering it later, make an overlay or something. Um, and the user will probably enter this PIN to my malware. Uh, and there is also another very interesting feature. Uh, it's called CDCVM. So uh, this will be the transactions uh, transaction over this flow limit. And just pay attention, where do you enter the pin? So you authorize these transactions not not, not at the terminal, but on your mobile phone. It's called consumer device card holder verification method. So when both devices, uh, uh, reader and, uh, and the phone agree that they support it, uh, then the card holder verification is performed on the user's device, uh, and it doesn't ask for the PIN. Uh, the terminal doesn't ask for the PIN. So of course, malware on this device could steal this PIN, uh, but, uh, well, it turns out that most applications do not have this CDCVM feature. Uh, it's, it just enters this market and, uh, well, maybe one in five applications have this feature. Uh, but how about applications that doesn't have this feature? Well, can we attack it? Uh, it turns out that even if application doesn't have the CDCVM feature built in, the HCE library it uses uh, it has this feature. So uh, these are the method names in one of the libraries. They can't obfuscate the method names. So you can see the set CVM ver verified, uh, and you can set it to true. <laughs> so uh, we could just take a mobile application and patch it uh, to set CVM verified. Uh, and then uh, even when the application doesn't support the CDCVM, we could uh, just uh, force the uh, reader to uh, believe that he, he, do he doesn't need to ask for the PIN. Uh, so in this way, uh, I could probably make transactions on a higher amount, not just this uh, uh, lower, uh, few lower uh, amounts transactions. And this is, of, of course, a much uh, bigger risk. Uh, so. We have tested uh, several applications. Uh, uh, I believe it was nine. Uh, and we have proved uh, all of them possible to, to clone this card data. Uh, 
all these applications we can we can estimate based on the HC libraries they use. We have tested seven various libraries. So uh, in most uh, in most cases, other other applications that uses the same library will work exactly the same, and we will also be able to clone it. Um, so uh, the easiest applications uh, didn't uh, didn't check multiple uh, device characteristics. So. I could just copy the data and change uh, I don't know, the model uh, in the build prop file. Uh, there was no root detection, so I didn't need to hide it. And in order to replenish the uh, uh, the uh, keys, it wasn't uh, the Google Cloud involved. So just a sim simple uh, API uh, request to the server, and I got the new keys. Uh, on the other uh, on the on the other hand, the the hardest application uh, had uh, checked multiple device characteristics. So, uh, in order to clone the data, uh, I needed to use exposed module to spoof the original device. Uh, but exposed uh, needs root, so I needed to hide this root. But this application had a very good root detection using native library. So. It was very time consuming to do it, and finally uh, I did it using exactly the same hardware device just to make the proof of concept. Uh, but uh, as an attacker, I would probably leave this application alone and move to another one. Uh, so, what can we do to, to prevent it? Well, the obvious question would be can we, can we prevent the cloning? Well, Unfortunately, at this moment, no. Uh, the best thing we can do is just don't be the last one. Uh, so you can divert the use multiple use mul multiple security mechanisms to divert the attacker to another weaker application, uh, and uh, we can use uh, we can check for more device characteristics uh, to make it more difficult to spoof the original device. Uh, we could improve the root detection. Um, uh, Google's safety net is quite good, and uh, they have potential to make it better. Uh, there is uh, open source root beer, very good. Uh, uh, Google's safety net, well, uh, it's not perfect at this moment, but will be better, hopefully. Uh, if you uh, know a little bit about root and uh, root hiding, uh, you probably know that it's kind of cat and mouse game. So, uh, if having root, you can always hide from the root detectors. Uh, just like I did a few months uh, ago uh, for the safety net, which was used in Google uh, Google's Apple Pay. Uh, this is the uh, safety net decompiled code, which checks for super user binary. So, instead of using SU, I used my own initials, SJ. Uh, so, uh, it didn't detect this uh, phone is rooted. Um, but uh, they have potential to make it better and integrate better with, with, uh, with the phone. Um, of course, we can improve integrity checks, binary protections, use key stores, and so on. Uh, and uh, last but not least, we can uh, make better fraud, fraud uh, detection uh, to integrate things from the phone into existing fraud, fraud management systems. For example, uh, make device scoring uh, that impacts uh, the risk. Uh, if you have a really old Android phone, the, there is a much higher risk that your phone may be uh, attacked by malware, for example. Uh, well, there are malware detection systems for, for mobile phones that are far from perfect. Uh, so uh, probably uh, you should think of uh, making something by your own. Um, in the future, well, I'm quite sure that Google knows uh, uh, that with great power comes great responsibility, and they are working really hard to make uh, the devices more secure. Uh, I hope uh, in the near future we will have trusted execution ex environment and deeper integration into hardware, uh, but, uh, well, we don't know. <laughs> uh, and on the other hand, we will have much more widespread mobile payments, and of course it will attract more attention of the fraudsters. So, uh, let's hope for the best, but uh, I would suggest to prepare and verify for the worst. 
Uh, and uh, with this hopefully optimistic accent, uh, I, I don't want to be the last one standing between you and the after party. <laughs> uh, so uh, uh, you're free to go and if anyone has a question, you can just catch me there or uh, near our booth uh, over there. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs>